Kia orana. Heidi Mai, welcome Gemini to your 2015 December tarot scope reading. Hey guys, thanks for joining me and sitting back to listen and pick up the messages that are coming your way for your end of year reading. We'll be using mainly the John Holland deck along with a Rider Waite card and some Oracle cards at the end to look at the energies taking you into 2016. So as I say, wherever you are around the world listening to this, I hope you are fine and well and that you are able to just take some time out, chillax and enjoy this reading. So let's start by shuffling a little bit for you. I will go through the cards as we work through them and tell you what their meanings are and what specific points they're addressing within the reading. So this is for Gemini, for December 2016. Okay guys, your first card up is the Throat Chakra. Interesting one, communication. And Gemini loves to talk and loves language, so that kind of fits really well with you guys. The second one is Patience and Planning. Your third one is movement, choices and decisions. Your fourth one is prosperity begins. It feels as though we got, we've got a lot of red in here for you, which is the pentacles, which are your earth sign energies as well. So finances might be on your mind, career opportunities, that type of thing, either taking you into the end of 2015 in December and leading you into 2016. Passion Ignited, and the final card, which is a Major Arcana, which is a Wisdom. That's the final card for the John Holland. We are pulling one from the Rider Waite as well. So let's see what comes out here for you guys. This is for Gemini. This final card is the overall card, the overall energy. The Six of Swords. Okay guys, let's start with your first card and I'm just going to check that they are all in the screen and indeed they need a little bit of moving up. The two crystals that are in your reading and I was nearly going to put the blue lace agate in which I will do and we'll pop it on here anyhow because it sort of gives off that lovely energy for communication and for the throat chakra. But this is a red jasper pyramid and this is a beautiful clear quartz with a rainbow energy running through it. Very good for connecting to your thoughts and increasing clarity around ideas that might be blocked or that you're thinking about. So the first card is the root of the energy for now. And that's card number one, and we've got this throat chakra. It makes me think about communication for you guys in particular. And one way or another, whether it's within your relationships or it's within um, dealings with situations to make them move ahead out of either stalemate or um, out of a phase where no action is being taken or things are going backwards, communication is the key. Now remember communication comes in not just verbal as in talking but it's every form of communication so written communication as well. Whether or not something's come a bit stagnant because you have uh, let the communication flow go so emailing back and forth, um, writing something down. Some of you this could even be for from an artistic perspective this whether any of you are involved with writing or um, producing books or so there is this feeling of, um, yeah, wanting to clarify or re-establish, reconnect some communications. And as I say, bear in mind all possibilities, especially written as well. So anyhow, we come to the next card, which is Patience and Planning, which is a Pentacles card, and it's the Seven of Pentacles. In the Rider Waite deck, it would traditionally show a man sort of standing over a reaped harvest of... Um, 
vines and pentacles all mixed together and there's some degree of satisfaction in the hard work that he has put into um, his achievements and that they are financially stable and growing at the same time. Now this card represents your emotions and feelings in the month. So again this is why we come back to thinking about your um, thoughts around finances, money, career, bills or investments, it's all of that type of thing. That card is a really benevolent one to get and it talks about the possibilities of good success with either something that you had started and are working on and seeing it through to gain um, compounding if you like, compounding successes and growth and it has a firm base to work from. So your patience will be rewarded in the work that you've put in and in the planning and the time that you are prepared to take to see this come to fruition as well. The third card is your thinking process and your career matters. And again we have the pentacles card and the whole pentacles feelings. This is the two of pentacles and it's movement, choices and decisions. I see here too before I go any further, you have two ones next to each other. So these are about, ones are often considered new beginnings and in the traditional decks these would be pretty much considered the two aces. So it is a nice reading for you guys. I see lots of um, fulfillment of plans that you've been doing, you know, whether it's been a long period as a whole year or even longer or something that could even be dreams that you've had for a long time that are coming to fulfillment one way or another through your determination, hard work and desire to make them succeed. But coming back to the Two of Pentacles, we see that it says movement, choices and decisions. It's as if you are being offered something and you have choices to make. And this will also be tied in very closely here to this patience and planning and of course your communication. Those three cards seem very interwoven to me. There's something about the subject matter that once you get one going, it'll um, be a topple effect, like a domino effect, moving into the others to create the action there as well. It feels as though your finances are moving, are fluid. There's coming and going. You've got the propensity to, some of you might be wishing to make um, investments one way or another. It could be the purchase of a big ticket item, such as a car or a trip overseas, a house or um, dividends or investing in bonds or stocks or something along those lines. If we think of the Two of, car, um, the two of Pentacles traditionally in the Rider Waite deck, We usually denote this card as a um, jester, a court jester, juggling his finances and that's what I feel about it coming and going and being very fluid and also the word movement often to me um, has the feeling of travel. Some of you may travel for your career or your job or to do with money or as I say maybe that you've planned a big ticket trip somewhere, this could be all coming into play and the, the finances have played a part in the achievement and success of this. Jumping again, the gun over here, attached right next to it, is the Six of Swords, which is often also about travel, and sometimes it um, literally physical travel by boat or by sea, and sometimes with more than just yourself, sometimes a family is accompanied. And this card, the seventh card, is the overall energy of the month card, so it's quite a powerful one, it sort of sets the tone for what's going on. So there's definite, definite movement around you, and... Um, this card can also be emotional or you know internal movement so going from something that's been a little bit turbulent or rough into smoother calmer waters as well so the card has both of those objectives around it and both of those feelings connected either way Gemini you are moving in in December and I think that suits you you're very much that um, sign of perpetual movement energy. I don't ever feel you as being a static bunch of people. You, It's like, I doubt that you could sit down long and do nothing in particular. You know, you'd always be doing something, whether it's in your mind or physically, you're on the go. And the reading sort of suggests that. So it does tell you to be cautious with your finances remember there are periods when we get coming and going and to set some aside to pay your bills and to put um 
just to make sure it's balanced in that perspective. So you could also expect periods in the month where you might see large amounts of money coming in unexpectedly possibly. It could be um, through the way of gifting or um, some sort of windfall and oftentimes around Christmas if that's what your particular belief is or holiday times we do get perhaps some presents that might be a little bit of um, money involved that could be a prosperous gain so there's that kind of feeling there as well. If we come to the fourth card down here it is the issue, it's the heart or the issue of the matter in this month. And again, we've got the money and its prosperity begins. So this would be the Ace of Pentacles. It's about new opportunities, propositions, ideas, clicking over the, the thought patterns, the establishment of something from thought into reality, moving forward with money behind you, um, new job opportunities, so if you're looking for jobs, get your CV out there. Make sure you're the best candidate that an employer could wish to hire. And um, you have to make yourself look good. There are thousands of people often for each job, so you have to stand out. There's a few tips for CVs, and I'm sure most of you have already Googled online to get a good CV. Um, sometimes it's about having a bright coloured header page. You know, so it stands out in a pile of 40 that, that it's a slightly different colour. Um, having a really positive um, quotation on your front cover and one that I have used before and have seen success with people who I've helped with their um, career area is the statement, your name, so like Bill Smith, your future employee. You know, something like that, so that you push your examples and you push your positivity. These are all ways of helping you if you are looking for work. The other thing too is remember a lot of people are finding employment or money to help them through in their own little businesses that they're getting started. And there is a wealth of opportunity out there for the home business. And you've just got to again kick into your ideas, you've got to connect with yourself. Whatever it is that you do well, somebody else is bound to want to buy it or pay for it. And, you know, we're becoming much more and more, we see these small businesses popping up everywhere. And there's the we term, pop-up stalls. It's like pop-up businesses. They're quite successful and they, um, they can grow from a starting point to becoming something quite big as well. And we also see the hands, I think, of partnerships involved. Sometimes I think, is there you know, two people involved here? Is there someone who supports you or nurtures you through the process as well? So then we go to the next card, the fifth card, and that is your unconscious matters or things that you didn't know that you wanted. And we see that as being the passion ignited card. Sorry guys, I'm just checking that my camera is still recording. Yes, we see it's the Passion Ignited card. And again, this would be the Ace of Wands. So this is all about that, I'm just talking about it, creativity. The thoughts that, you know, propel you into action. And you really, these are what artists and um, actors and any creative person gets their inspiration from. And it comes from right within the heart area here. And it travels through the whole of your being including the throat chakra up and around through here. There's lots of fire and energy delivered to this bit to get this, um, the thoughts into words or verbal words or written words to pass it along to get this creative spirit started. Really magical card. It can also be about um, romantic passion or you know passion for life and for relationships as well. So some of you looking for new relationships, this could be a good time to really ignite and um, send out those sparks of desire. You know, send that Cupid's arrow out into the universe and ask for it to be delivered to someone and that you will meet. And if you're already in a relationship, this could be the time to reignite that passion again and, and feel the sparks and the reason why you chose to be with that person in the first place. So if we come to, and that was your subconscious, you know, this is what's going on beneath you, what's kind of your driving force, if you like, as well, what's, what's creating stirrings within your body and your mind. We come to the sixth card, which is a major arcana, it's number five, and it would be the Hierophant in the traditional Rider Waite, and this is your conscious desires, the things that you know that you do want, 
And of course the Hierophant is often about tradition and doing things by the book and um, being loyal and upstanding. And the word wisdom is very profound. We gain wisdom hugely along our journey of life. And our wisdom can be um, philosophical as well as logical, as well as deeply connective and spiritual. It is at all levels and we gain this wonderful wisdom and it feels like you have gained wisdom along your journey and you're now able to, number one, give it back out and you've learned from it so you can pass it forward and become this really um, powerhouse of knowledge and ability and help and support and intrigue and teaching. And at the same time, you you gain more. Every time we've learnt, we continue to learn. It's like an evolutionary cycle or circle. It never stops. So your wisdom becomes self-fulfilling and propels even further. And I can find in the book for you to quickly read some of the words from the wisdom um, card. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. This card illustrates that there's a spiritual teacher who's about to influence you or step into your life to impart his or her wisdom. Look around. Is there someone in your life who has the acumen, education, knowledge and ability to integrate spiritually and its laws into the constraints of the physical world? This could be a compassionate person who offers guidance and inspiration and reminds you you're so much more than a physical being. You are a spiritual being with unlimited potential. You may have also drawn this card to confirm it's time to reach out and find an organisation or group of like-minded souls. Being part of a group is where you can share your thoughts and get valuable feedback and infuse you and encourage you to be all that you can. And over time the student becomes the teacher so don't be surprised when others seek out to find you. The card of wisdom is letting you know you have so much to share whether you realise it or not. So it's a wonderful card to have and this again is kind of your background energies that are, you know, your, um, your sort of subconscious and your conscious all desired together and the energies that are pulling forth. And we've already really addressed the final outcome card, this definitely the feeling of travel, movement, there's newness in your um, reading, there's direction, you've got direction and you're heading in it and it will take you to calmer waters if you've been in places of either disharmony or doubt or anything along those lines. So nice reading there for you Gemini. What we will do now is work with the other cards from the Oracle deck. So we will pack these ones away and move into your Oracle decks. This first one is for your health, and we're using this card, this deck. So this is leading you into 2016, and it's sort of energies to think about and ponder upon. Singing and dancing, expressing yourself and awaken your psychic senses through the magical power of music and movement. We seem to have talked a lot about that in your reading. I've mentioned that I don't feel that you would ever be um, a sign that sits statically around. And I think for you, your, your real innate connection is activated when there is a part of you that is moving, whether it's your brain or your body or um, your personality or anything. It just makes you tick and click. So this is the love um, portion now. What we'll see have you got for love? Ask. Exactly. We don't ask enough. We think, you know, we sometimes sit there and go, oh, I really want this to happen in my life. But we forget to ask for it to happen. It's so simple. So you sit there thinking, oh, you know, I want a, a person in my life, a loving relationship, or I want a great job, or I want to be healthy. And that's all you say. You just have to actually ask for this to be initiated. And don't just ask once, ask continuously. And at the end of it, always, always have a gratitude. The same as when you ask any person on, on the planet for anything. So if you say to someone, oh, um, can I have that, please? And then you say, thank you. It's the same when you're asking the universe. The gratuities work in every level of this universe. So when you ask your angels or your spirit guides for anything, you say thank you for that. I am so looking forward to it. 
and the more meaning and connection you put with it, man, the more the universe is going to deliver it for you. It's actually quite simple. The third one is the wealth card for you. And we will use this deck here. What did I just say? Confirmation for you. If you believe, ask. If you believe, you, you will receive. And you really have to connect and you really have to believe. So this is for the finances perspective. So again, you know, a lot of people have been through a lot in the last four or five years. And to be honest, we're not through it yet. So there's no point giving up. We're here. We've got this far. Um, we're over the hump, if you like, but there's still work to do and there's still stuff coming. And we can see that from the global ramifications that are going on. So it's no point hiding behind, you know, rose-tinted glasses or being like an ostrich and putting our head in the sand. Of course, life is difficult and it's difficult for everyone. So you're not alone, um, but never give up, never stop asking and never stop believing. Um, your final card is your destiny card and this is the goddess energy some of these are very profound as well so this is for you Gemini for the energies of 2016 Diana, focused intention keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings and actions focused on your target and you will make your mark you, you know, whoever's here with you for your reading, whatever energies have come in, because each reading has sort of set specific energetic vibrations that come in with it. So sometimes it can be um, various people's spirit guides, or it can be angelic presences, or just universal energies that, you know, bombard me during the readings. Yours is towards this end here, it's like really forceful, it's like, phew, they're, <laughs> they're picking these words out and they're not mincing around, they are just jamming it home to you, it's like you don't have a choice, You, they're telling you to go out there, take action, be forceful, don't give up, don't stop, keep asking um, and keep focused and how much more do you need here to to know that the more you put in and the more determined you are the more likely success will be and yeah it's not necessarily going to be overnight but this is your life you came here to live it we only have one life well in this time and we want to make as much of it as we can and every challenge and every hurdle we face and we go through we learn and we come out the other side bolder, brighter, stronger, wiser, better. So there you are, Gemini. It is amazingly powerful. I um, really enjoyed doing this for you and with you. I felt the power coming through and I love it when that happens. Um, I thank you all for tuning in and listening and I do wish for you the very, very best for 2016 and also a wonderful December and festive time coming and holidays, safe travels wherever you choose to go and much love, light and laughter in your lives. So thank you again for listening. If you want to have a reading with me, follow the links. And other than that, ka kite anoa, kia kaha, much aroha, namaste.